After a certain point, there is a dark side to saving more money. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what you should be doing with your money right now. I wanna ask you a question. Why do you think a lot of people don't invest their money into their future? I think there are three reasons why they don't. The first one is fear. Just fear of the unknown. Just fear of taking their money out of their bank account and putting it into an investment that they're fearful of. The second reason would be lack of money. They just don't believe they make enough money or they have enough money left over at the end of the month to be investing. The third one would be they just don't believe in investing. Their parents didn't do it. Their friends don't do it. They just don't believe in the stock market. They think it's a sham. Over the last 100 years, there has not been a 20 year period where the market has not had positive results. Seven years ago, I feel like once you have at least three to six months worth of expenses covered, at that point, you should start looking to invest. Either it is in a stock market or it is in a business venture, but start putting your money elsewhere because you know inflation, I forget the inflation rate, but just know that the $10,000 you have right now isn't gonna be worth as much in maybe 10 years or so. So what does this mean for you or not? Once you have, let's say your rent or your mortgage is at least $1,000 per month, for example, right? You want to have at least $6,000 saved up, plus maybe housing, other expenses, food. So maybe you want to have at least maybe 10 to maybe $20,000 saved up in your savings accounts. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. I think it's tripping. So that you would be good in the case, in the event that you got fired or you want to quit, you'd be good for the next three to six months or so, maybe even a year. Once you have that amount saved up, okay, how can I get out of debt? I feel like investing outside of a typical Roth IRA or 401k while still being in debt is kind of counterintuitive. The 401k, definitely do that. Match your employer's 401k, Roth IRA, or whatever it is, match it. That's free money. But it doesn't make sense to continue investing in Robinhood, M1 Finance, or any of these other apps, Webull, that people promote under their, their YouTube description if you still have, let's say, $10,000 in credit card debt. You guys. Okay, Linda, Linda, listen, Speak. listen, listen. Listen, 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 you. listen, listen, Linda, listen. Okay, what? Okay, so I feel like most people should follow the Dave Ramsey plan just to start, just to start, and then maybe follow Robert Kiyosaki, or just follow more of a, uh aggressive way to make money. Okay, let's say first, $1,000 saved up, or three months worth of expenses saved up. Done. Okay, how can I get out of my credit card debt? With credit card debt, you can do a credit card debt settlement approach with your bank. It's a very, it's not complicated, but it's a very long process to explain in one video. I have a whole 30 minute video that describes the whole process. So arguably, it is the quickest way to get out of credit card debt. I'll leave a link to that video in the description or a pinned comment or the cards up here in the video. So once you have a few months worth of expenses covered, okay, credit card debt, aggressively tap that. Okay, student loans, aggressively tap that. Now, save up maybe another three months worth of expenses. Now you have six months worth of expenses covered. Now at this point, start dabbling into other investments outside of your employer's 401k or Roth IRA. And a simple way to cut your expenses is to look at your monthly subscriptions. Is there a way for me to pay, pay less than my phone bill? Maybe I don't need the extra data. Maybe I don't need, maybe, <laughs> just a, okay, just a, this is just a friendly reminder to go to your Apple Music subscription feed and see what it is you don't you no longer need. Things and tap on your Apple ID. Then tap subscriptions. Here you can see all the subscriptions that you've signed up for through your iTunes account. Here's the trick, and it may be a loophole that they might close soon. But here you can see all the subscription options available for that app or service. For instance, I have Apple TV Plus at $5 a month, but I could switch to the annual plan for $50 a year. Now saving $10 on an annual subscription is a pretty common discount, but for certain apps, you may find the same exact subscription for way cheaper. And if it's a service that you do typically use, you'll probably end up saving more money if you go through the yearly option as opposed to paying monthly. You usually save a percentage. If it's a new service or a new uh, product, 
I, I would recommend doing a monthly just to see if you like it. But if it's something that you use on a regular basis, at that point, you definitely want to go for more of the annual uh, subscription to save you more money. I started a new job, banking industry. I have changed from a company that I had worked for many years to, to start with a new company. And when I got to that new bank, they offer a 401k program. So part of my investment strategy is three tiers. My first tier is pre-tax dollars that I invest through a 401k. My second tier is after-tax dollars that I invest into a Roth IRA. And then my third tier is a taxable brokerage account where I invest everything else that I have available to invest in the financial markets. So today I'm gonna walk you through one of those 401k accounts. Now I have several of them because I've worked for several different banks in my 25 years of banking. And I just wanna show you the numbers, how you can start investing money a little bit at a time and then how it grows over a seven year period. This particular account here started at zero. I was taking 10% of my pre-tax earnings from my employer and I was contributing that 10% to this brand new 401k. As you can see, I was invested in about four different investments. Now this investment went from zero to as of 6-30-2020 had $222,000 in it. My cost basis, I would say, was about $130,000 to $135,000. As of September 3rd, 2020, this particular account has grown to $252,000 with 11.23% return on investment. So I go from zero to $252,000 in seven years. That is the power of compounding in the stock market taking some money and then interest on top of interest on top of interest over a period of time grows your money. What should you be doing right now? If you're not investing in the market, if you're not investing in real estate, if you're not investing in a business, I would say you should start doing one of those three things. Put yourself together a six to 12 month emergency fund. That's number one. Number two, open a brokerage account and then start slowly investing take a hundred bucks put it in your brokerage account and buy one stock and see how that feels and from there you just continue to drip money into the market drip 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 and before you know it your confidence level will come up your behavior will change with money and then you'll have a steady flow of money going into the market that you can over the next 5 10 15 20 years grow into wealth for you you see what he said 5, 10, 15, 20 years. It's a long tail game. That's why when you see all these Forex day trading type of ads on YouTube, become a millionaire <laughs> with Forex day trading. Ooh, looks like someone's Shopify store is failing. Hey, knock it off. I'm just having a bad day, okay? Ooh, I bet you're going to give up now, huh? I'm not going to give up. I'm not chasing anything else, okay? What you going to do? You going to go back to SMMA? No, I don't want to try SMMA. I'm focusing on my... You going to buy some big coin you gonna do crypto again no i'm not i'm gonna focus on my oh oh you're gonna try to drop a course what are you gonna teach people in that course huh how to be a little bitch i'm not gonna sell a course until i'm what because you're a little bitch chasing shiny objects i'm not gonna sell a course until i'm because you're a little bitch chasing my D don't don't call me that i'm not a you gonna chase me no i'm, I'm not gonna chase yeah, you yeah you're gonna chase me no i'm not gonna you're a little bitch. don't call me that word because you're a little I mean, shiny ass object. I, I swear to God, when I catch, I swear to God, when I catch you, oh, you drop like a little bitch. Forex in itself is not a scam, but it's the people that teach you, quote unquote, to get on their team or whatever it is that they call it to make more money. Is that that part is a scam? The IML or I forget what they're called. But again, when it comes to investments, it's always five, ten, fifteen, twenty year type of thing. It's not. The work you put in or the money you put in now, you're not going to see it for the next couple months. Or not couple months, but next couple years. Or multiple, multiple years, if that makes sense. Honestly, I feel like the best side hustle to do, which also takes time. I get it, it takes time. I don't know, maybe because I'm biased, but I feel like YouTube. YouTube is probably the best way to like start 
getting a following or getting some traffic getting some, getting a, an additional source of income right literally just make your life content your life is content okay you're a mailman how much money do i make as a mailman uh how i how i became a mailman if you're a hairstylist how i became a hairstylist just make a youtube video about it um how i became a flight attendant how i became a barista how i became a chef it's really bro like I feel like it is hard, like it literally it's hard. Like you have a nine to five job or whatever it is, and now I'm asking you to make YouTube videos on top of that. It's hard. But literally, my setup is very simple. You only need no camera, you only need no editing software, just your, your phone, iPhone, tripod, and use iMovie. Literally everything I film on this on this channel is shot and edited off of my iPhone. So it's not as big of a hassle. So but without taking that first initial step which is opening the brokerage account or participating in your company's 401k plan, then you'll never know. Most people who have built wealth, when they think about money, they think about how can I make more of it, right? How can I leverage the money that I have to make more? Oftentimes people who are not wealthy, they spend most of their time worrying about money. Oh, I got this thousand dollars or $2,000 or $5,000. I got it in the bank and I need to protect that, that's all I got. And they tend to just worry about money, which prevents them from investing in their financial future. Which one are you? Are you worrying about money? Or do you wanna learn how to make money with money? And the financial markets is a good place to be able to put money to make money. If you're keeping money at the bank, it should be your emergency fund. Any other money outside your emergency fund, in my opinion, if you're someone who's trying to build wealth, then you should be taking that money and putting it in assets that build wealth. Facts. Preach, my nigga. Preach. Okay. That's facts. That's facts. That's facts. That's facts. That's facts. That's facts. All facts. No cap. All facts. No cap. Or even the idea of maybe even quoting a video, right? Let's say you do, let's say you do want to make YouTube your second source of income, additional income. You have the money, the money that you, you would have done to save. Instead, put it into hiring a, an editor for your video on Fiverr or Upwork, something like that. You're investing money for ultimate return in the long run because we know on YouTube, unlike any other platform, you will see videos that are on your feed that were made five years, three years, two years ago. Right? You don't really see on Instagram. On Instagram, you don't really see posts from two years ago or three years ago or four years ago. Not really. Even TikTok. It's all within the past week or two, the past month at the most. But YouTube is one of those platforms where you search for something. Literally, you, you search for something on YouTube. You don't go for TikTok or Instagram or I guess Twitter a little, a little bit. But the biggest platform you go to search out content or information is Google or YouTube. And then you'll see search results or even YouTube will give you videos that were made two, three, four, or five years ago, right? So you have those three to six months of expenses covered. Maybe you're working towards paying your debt. You have some additional income now or some additional money on the side after paying your credit card debt. Okay, maybe I want to make YouTube videos. I don't want to edit. Let me just record, have to pay someone to edit for me. And I know in the long run, once I get monetized and stuff like that, I will be able to make that money back. Like real estate, assets like the stock market, assets like a business. You should be actively taking all of your money that's not in your emergency fund and you should be looking to invest that money in the market now. In January of 2020, I had about 222,000, 226,000, something like that in my brokerage account. Then the pandemic hit. It went down to $180,000 in my brokerage account, the account I just showed you. I didn't panic though, because I knew this situation we was having with the pandemic had nothing to do with the health of our financial market. It had everything to do with fear and panic associated with the pandemic. So I wasn't concerned, I just said, okay, this is an opportunity for me to just stay the course and I know long-term it'll correct itself. So that account went from 180,000 that it had declined to from the 226 down to 180 in March. Today, in early September, it's worth 252. Had I panicked and started taking it out, I would have lost my shirt. So I just stayed the course. And that's what I'm telling you guys. If you do start investing, remember, you will have some ups and downs in the market, right? 
you're going to have some red days, you're going to have some green days. But over a long period of time, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the market has been positive results. And that's what helped me take my account from zero to $250,000 in seven years. That's just one of my accounts. But you can do the same thing, guys. But you got to stop worrying about money and start concentrating on how to make more money. That will allow you to get yourself in the market. That'll allow you to buy you some real estate. It'll allow you to build a business that can create cash flow, which you can then take that cash flow and invest it into other assets. It'll allow you to put money in the financial markets by way of index funds or individual stocks or bonds or mutual funds, whatever you want to put it in. It's up to you though. Get started now. And don't worry about waiting until the election's over or any of that other stuff. Forget about that. Just start investing now and have a long-term horizon and you put your money in growth products like growth index funds, growth stocks, and you'll be fine in my opinion. That was dope. That was a good reminder. Just a good reminder, like inflation is catching up. <laughs> if you're not making more money or have you, I think if anything, this whole thing, epidemic, pandemic, epidemic, pandemic, I wanted to meet up, but ooh, it's a pandemic. I would have let you come to my house, but like, oh, pandemic. <laughs> really, really wanted to see you, but like, mm, <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> Scary. Has taught us the, 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 the need for a second source of income, multiple streams, not even like one, right? You can't rely on that one thing. You need a second side hustle constantly going on. I could be one of my favorite side hustles outside of YouTube. Well, not YouTube, but like, well, I guess <laughs> for the everyday person is like doing paid studies or in-person studies. Like online surveys are a scam. Online surveys, scam. Paid in-person like lab studies that you get paid for, top tier. People are always want to know how certain things work and they always need more participants. So li literally just go to Google, search up paid lab studies or paid in-person focus groups in your area. And you'll see people are always on Kijiji or Google asking for participants to give money to in exchange for their time and uh, data. You know what I'm saying? But yo, save your money. How much How much of your current paycheck are you currently saving? If you're getting $2,000, are you saving 20% of that? Are you putting $400 directly into your savings account? And once you have those three months worth of expenses covered, okay, what are your debts? Student loans? Okay. The interest isn't too, isn't too high on that. But like the biggest one that a lot of people may suffer from is definitely the credit card debt. The credit card debt is something that can be avoidable, but is a harder financial burden given the 19% plus interest rate, right? Again, credit card debt settlement is your best friend or even debt consolidation, but it's not, it's not my favorite one in order to get out of debt ASAP, no rocky. Check out the links in the description, pin comment. Definitely another big uh, <laughs> money eater is any addictions marijuana alcohol nicotine if you want to if you struggle with that you want to quit the links in more description for more relevant information all right god bless much love peace and joy namaste always remember if it doesn't feed you don't water it and too much of any good thing is good for nothing watch my past video right here on death settlement or my other video right here on how to quit marijuana how are you lot doing today i'm doing more saying less and keeping that same energy no cat Took the script, I'm out, deuces. No for certain. Hey, I was the man when I was a kid. Look at me now, I'm poorly or rich. Still on the block, I'm still with a click. Still on the stage, they're loving my shit. Uh, all we do is win, man. Flex like all I ever do is gym. I'm in VIP.